so this is your global thickness matrix okay or in this way you will get your global thickness matrix as 10 raised to power 6 into 1 minus 1 0 0 minus 1 1 plus 1 it will become 2 minus 1 0 0 minus 1 1 plus 1 minus 1 1 plus 1 will become equal to 2 0 0 minus 1 minus 1 okay so this k will become equal to 10 raised to power 6 1 2 3 4 uh, and fit the uh, position between 1 2 3 4 and it will be written as 10 raised to power 6 into 1 minus 1 0 0 minus 1 2 minus 1 0 0 minus 1 2 minus 1 0 0 minus 1 minus 1 okay so now next is what next thing is write down force and displacement relationship as there are four nodes, so we, we need to write down these four equations for nodal forces in terms of nodal displacement. So, how we are going to write down this as by this global stiffness matrix? We know that force displacement relationship. This is the global stiffness matrix times your nodal displacement. Okay, so we can write this as as there are four nodes. This is your global pi in this global stiffness matrix itself. We can write our force displacement relationship. So as we know that there are four nodes, so there must be four nodal four nodal forces. So in this way you can write your force displacement relationship. So here u1 u2, u3 and u3. Okay. So in this way you can write this force and displacement relationship. Now next thing is what? Next thing is what? Now apply the boundary conditions. Okay. So first we need to apply the boundary conditions for this force, the uh, force, the uh, nodal force vector. Second, we will apply our boundary conditions for this nodal displacement vector. So first, our nodal uh, force vector, so find out what, what will be the boundary conditions for this F1, F2, F3, F4. Okay, so for first node, actually first node is fixed one. So F1 is unknown as there must be some reactions at this node 1 because of this fixed support. Okay, now second, at second node, Look, this 3 kN of force is applied at this second node. So, F2 will become equal to 3 kN. Now, at this 3, uh, at the third node, there is, there is no type of, uh, no type of any force is acting at third node. Means, it is not mentioned in this example. So, we should take this equal to 0. Now, for fourth node, it is a fixed one, so F4 should be equal to R4 or here F1 is equal to R1. Okay, so in this way your force boundary condition for force no nodal force vector will become so for so F1 is equal to so we can write it as F1 is equal to R1. F2 is equal to 3 kN F2 is equal to 3000 Newton F3 is equal to 0 and F4 is equal to R4 So this is the boundary condition for this Similarly, apply the boundary condition for displacement vector Okay, so for first term Displacement it should be equal to u1, but u1 will become 0 because of this fixed support. As we know that there is no movement of the displacement at this node, so it should be equal to 0. Now u2 it should be unknown, means we need here uh, our question is to find out the displacement at node 2, so this is unknown. Similarly, u3 is also unknown. And u4, now u4 it will become equal to 0 because of this fixed support. Why? Uh, why? Uh, because there is no movement for any. Uh, there will not.
number of the gaming moment of this placement at this node. So it will become equal to 0. So u1 is equal to 0, u2 is equal to unknown, u3 is equal to unknown, and u4 is equal to 0. This is your boundary condition. Okay. So u1 is equal to 0, u1 is equal to 0, u2 is unknown, u3 is also unknown, and u4 is equal to 0. This is your boundary condition. Now next is what? Next thing is what? Now apply the elimination approach. Now execute your elimination approach to get the displacement values. Okay. So how do you execute the elimination approach? So first find out the zero displacement values at RHS for this force displacement relationship. Find out the where the displacement is zero or in which equation you will get the displacement value is at uh, as a zero. So here first equation value shows u1 is equal to zero. Similarly, for u4 is a so showing a displacement zero. So you need to eliminate this equation means uh, you need to eliminate the column and rows related to this equation. So as first displacement is equal to zero, so we need to eliminate this first row and first column. Similarly, as u4 is equal to 0, we need to eliminate fourth row and fourth column. Now remaining two equations by uh, now we can write as remaining two equations as f2 is equal to 3000 is equal to 10 raised to the power 6 times. 10 raised to the power 6 times. Don't remember or don't forget the take this into account. 10 raised to the power 6. Okay. So don't forget to take this value into account while solving the these two equations. 10 raised to the power 6 into 2 times u2 minus 1 times u2. 2 times u2 minus 1 times u2. Similarly, f3 is equal to 0, which is nothing but 10 raised to the power 6 in bracket minus 1 into u2 means minus u2 plus 2 times u2 minus u2 plus 2 times u2. Okay, so this will be the, these are the two equations. Now, this 10 raised to the power 6, it will become, this will be equal to 3 into 10 to the power 6, 3 divided by 10 to the power 6 is equal to 2 times u2 minus u3 and this 0 divided by 10 to the power 6 is equal to u2, sorry minus u2 plus 0 is minus u2 plus minus u2 plus 2 times u3. Okay, so you can write in simplified format as 3 into 10 raised to power minus 3 is equal to okay, 2 times u2 minus u3 and 0 is equal to minus u2 plus 2 times u3. Okay, so in this way you can write or you can simplify the these two equations. Now by solving these two equations for these two unknowns, u2 and u3, you can see you will get the values of u2 and u3 as on solving these two equations. In your can see itself, you will get the values of u2 and u3 as. So you will get the value of u2 equal to 0 0.002 mm. 0 0.002 mm. And value of u3 is equal to 0 0.001 mm. Okay, 0 0.001. You will get the values of u2 is equal to 0 0.002 mm and u3 is equal to 0 0.001 mm. Now next is what? Now find out the reactions. So by using this first and fourth equation, you will get the reactions. So F1 is R1 is equal to R1 is equal to 1 times U1 means U1 is equal to 0. So 0 minus 1 into U. So minus 1 into U. 
minus u. But 10 raised to the power 6 also. Don't forget to take this 10 raised to the power 6 into account. Minus u2 minus u2 with 0, 0. Okay. And so by solving this 10 raised to the power 6 into minus u2 because 10 raised to the power 6 into minus 0 0.002. So you will get R1 as R1 is equal to so to minus 2000 and for R2 sorry R4 you need to write this fourth equation R4 is 0 times 0 0 times 0, minus 1 times 0, minus 0. 10 raised to power 6 into minus 3. So you will get 10 raised to the power 6 into minus 0 0.00 so it will be equal to R4 uh, is equal to minus 1000 yes. R1 uh, is equal to minus 1000 R4 uh, is equal to minus 1000 Now cross check your answer Yes we know that at node 2 the force of 3000 Newton is acting in positive horizontal direction now, balance is 2000 Newton. 2000 Newton is acting at node 1 in opposite direction, in opposite to the positive direction. And similarly, 1000 is acting in opposite to the positive. Means 1000 plus 2000, this 3000 is balanced by this 3000. So, our answer is correct. Okay, so in this way, you can cross check your answers also. So, finally, you will get your global stiffness matrix, then displacements, ut, ut, and reactions R1 and R2. Okay, so in this way you can proceed. Now, next step is what? To find out the stresses. Okay, so to find out the stresses in 11, 1, 2, and so as we know that. Here, I am not going to solve this, but I will tell you the procedure or formula. Okay. So, what will be the formula? Sigma 1, it is given by E1 by L1 in bracket. Difference between the two displacements for this element. At sigma 1, it is, we have uh, determined this sigma 1 for element 1. So, in between node 1 and 2. So, E1 by L1, the difference between these two nodes means u minus it will become u2 minus u1. Similarly, sigma 2 is equal to e2 by l2 in bracket u3 minus u2 because this element 2 lies between node 2 and 3. And finally, sigma 3 is equal to e3 by l3 in bracket u4 minus u3. As this is this lies between node 3 and 4. We should write this stress value as e3 by l3 in 4 minus u3. So, in this way, you will get the values of stresses sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3 for each element. Okay. So, try to solve this sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3. Okay. So, in this way, we have covered this example. Means, four, uh, we have answered four questions. First one is what? Global stiffness matrix. Second, in, second one is what? displacement u2 and u3 at respective nodes third one is what reaction reactions uh, 2000 and 1000 minus 2000 minus 1000 r1 and r2 and fine, finally the stresses sigma 1 sigma 2 and sigma 3 so in this way you should proceed your exam actually this type of such type of examples will be asked in your insert examination if it is asked in the insert examination it should be asked for 6 to 8 marks and it, it actually it is very simple because this elementary stiffness matrix is very simple. 10 raised to power as there is no any other value regarding uh, instead of this 10 raised to power 6, actually, if the problem is complex, then instead of 10 raised to power 6, there must be uh, uh, another complex value should be there. Okay, so this is very simple problem. Actually, it should be asked in your in some examination for 6 to 8 marks, and if it's asked in any sub examination, it should be for all four values. Means Global stiffness matrix, it is for 4 marks. Then your displacements for 2 marks. 
reactions for two marks and stresses for two marks means you will get 10 marks probably in your in uh, semester examination okay so here we will conclude our lecture okay and in next lecture we will try to solve the temperature stresses problems okay as you have solved such type temperature stresses problems in your strength of material theory strength of material subject now we will solve such type of problems means then if temperature stresses occurs in your example then how to proceed such type of problems by using finite elemental proceed this such type of problems we will try to solve in your next lecture okay. thank you